Hello and welcome to another Tech Distractions video. In this one we'll be looking at a motherboard and graphics combination from the year 2000 and checking out its Windows 98 and DOS gaming performance. The board we're looking at is from PC Partner, a BSM S3-C872, a budget all-in-one micro ATX board featuring the Intel 810 chipset. It is matched with the Pentium 3 733E CPU, 384MB of SD RAM, onboard AC97 sound and an integrated GPU the Intel i752. Shortly after releasing their first consumer 3D graphics card, the i740, which Intel largely sourced from Lockheed Martin's Real 3D, Intel rolled out a successor, the i752, codenamed Portola, in early to mid-1999. It had some new tricks included to bump up performance over the i740, but unfortunately continued using system memory, and as such, performance still lagged behind the very quickly progressing 3D scene. After some initial plans to make the card a discrete offering like the i740, the i752 was cancelled and repurposed among various integrated graphics offerings, assumingly to allow Intel to compete with other budget solutions from Trident and SIS. During Intel's rollout of the 810 and 815 chipsets, there were multiple versions of the i752 and also the i754. Some of the IP ended up in Intel's follow-up, Extreme Graphics Solution. As the i752 was not commercially released as a discrete card, this left the i740 as Intel's only discrete GPU in a market, and once it finished selling, Intel would back away from this market for many, many years. Here is the board set up on my test bench with a professional grade cardboard motherboard holder. Everest gives us a good view of the components in this build. We can see our Intel i752 graphics, along with the SoundMax integrated audio. The SoundMax is only going to work in Windows. We will need to use a dedicated sound card later for DOS games. Due to a compatibility problem between the motherboard and the RAM, the BIOS cannot seem to see over 384MB, despite me having almost double that amount installed. For now I'll leave it, but later I might switch around some sticks and see what changes. Take a look at incoming using the in-game benchmark. I'll be using the results I got from my previous video on the SIS 300, which is running a slightly slower Pentium 3 700E CPU instead of the 733E CPU here, but it can still be used for comparison anyway. At 480p we get an average of 48.40 FPS, which is playable, and when compared to the SIS 300, the i752 doesn't look too bad. Two Rock is an older title that should run okay, but as you can see with the benchmark, our scores are quite low. I might need to turn off a few settings and see if that makes any difference. As you can see, the SIS really pulls away here. Quake 3 using the 4DM benchmark. The i752 puts up a good fight here and gets close to 60 frames per second. It's a lot stronger than SIS in this title. Stepping back to GL Quake using Demo 1 Benchmark, we see similar scores compared to the SIS, and at 480p it's very much playable. Expendable is a little too much for the i752, and it does worse than the SIS in this benchmark. This frame rate is a little too low for a fast paced game like this. Finally, we have Need for Speed Porsche Unleashed. The i752 delivers a good experience here while using the lower settings and almost doubles the frame rate of the SIS 300. As mentioned before, the integrated sound only works under Windows. If you want sound and music to work in DOS, you'll need to add a PCI sound card, like this ESS Solo 1 that I've got installed here. The ESS card does not need any TSR or memory drivers to operate. It has a really good implementation of the OPL3 called ESFM, and is compatible with the Sound Blaster Pro, so game music should sound pretty good and sound effects will be accurate.
Using CPU speed utility, we can get Jazz to play at the correct speed and only a small side effect of an occasional music glitch. I'll put a link to it in the video description below. It's a really handy tool for slowing down your PCs. We can also get something like Striker to run, which is usually speed limited to 4.77 MHz. Ok, let's wrap up this video. The i7-5 II doesn't do too bad overall. Games played without issue and performance was ok in low settings, and at 480p resolutions most titles played ok. It is on par with other integrated offerings such as the SIS-300 and boards containing this solution can be found pretty cheap. There are limits though. The i7-5 II was not positioned as a gaming powerhouse, and the specs reflect this. The A10 chipset based motherboards often don't have an AGP expansion slot, so you're going to be stuck with PCI if you want to upgrade from the i7-5 II. While I don't recommend going out and specifically looking for an A10 based i7-5 II board, if you do see one for a really cheap price, grab it. It's a cheap retro board, it's interesting to look back on what budget tech was like around the turn of the century. So if you've managed to stick around to the end of this video, thank you. I'm busy compiling some new videos including some DOS focused ones for December, so stay tuned. Until then, bye for now.